In this video, my two good friends, Simon Barguette and Mark Olson, join me to play a match in the Backgammon Grandmaster Challenge Series. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe, and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below, what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. I appreciate your super thanks. These small donations help me continue to create the high-quality content that you enjoy. Now we have membership options where you can get exclusive access to the most popular videos. My book, Backgammon Backgammon Strategies, is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get them. And if you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. My email address is in the description. Again, in this video, it's my great pleasure to have two of my good friends, two world-class players, uh, Simon Barget from the UK and Mark Olson from Denmark. I'll introduce you one at a time. We'll start with Simon since you're at the top of the screen. Welcome, Simon. Hi, Alex. How are you doing today? I'm doing really well. Thank you. How are you? My pleasure. Very good. Thank you for asking. And you're joining us from uh, London in the UK? Right. Yes. 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 Great. Um, happy to have you back. Uh, looking forward to it. Uh, and welcome to my good friend Mark Olson from Denmark, but now you live in Portugal. Is that correct? Hey, Alex, that's correct. I'm here from Portugal and I'm here to not be the CEO of Backgammon Galaxy, but simply just play a good game of Backgammon against uh, my friend Simon, analyze it, share the thought process, and uh, of course also promote my new book, uh, how to not suck at backgammon, which is a great book for beginners and intermediates. Or if you're teaching a new player, you get a, a lot of good stuff here uh, in this book. So yeah, looking forward yeah, to I, this. Uh... I, I really like the idea of that book. Um, I know you've written a lot of really good books uh, for higher levels. What motivated you to uh, write a book for beginners? I, yeah, I have like a handful of books now. And I think the, the books that was most for beginners was From Basics to Badass. And kind of like the title indicates, it goes from the basics up all onto... Oh, yeah, this one is Cube Like a Boss. <laughs> slightly higher that. level. <laughs> nice. Uh, Cube Like a Boss is maybe the level above that. That's more like for advanced players and, and above. Uh, I just felt like From Basics to Badass didn't really fulfill the purpose of being a pure beginner's book because it gets too advanced like halfway through and throughout the end. So I wanted to just write a book that's just focusing on the basics. So basically like uh, from when you're beginning up to like, let's say 2000 in galaxy rating, uh, that's like the range that I was aiming for here. So it, it, the, like the first section of the book is really basics, like don't bury your checkers and build a prime. The five point is better than the seven point, all this super basic stuff. Uh, but then it gets a little bit more advanced from that. Uh, Peter Halberg, the world champion from, I think, 2003, was a master level, level player. He did all the quizzes, and he was far from getting 100% accuracy. So even if you're like a master level, you're still going to pick up uh, some tips and tricks from this book. Great. And I think that, like, in the beginning, there's some explanation about the rules of the game and things like that. Not really. Oh, not I just really basically just link to, uh, to our YouTube channel. If you don't know the rules, go to... Begammon Galaxy's YouTube channel. Great. Check I, the rules. So I just jumping it. straight to the action. And it's, a, it's it a very, away. thank you. And it's yeah, a yeah. very like practical minded book. It doesn't spend too much time defining stuff. It's just like straight to the action. Just lots of positions and uh, yeah, teach you the basics. Great, great. That's fantastic. You do a lot of work for um, Backgammon Galaxy, of course. So I appreciate that. I wanted to express my gratitude here uh, with you in Thank person. You. Thank you for that. I'll put a link to in the description where people can buy the book uh, and, you know, the Backgammon Galaxy website, the shop and all that stuff. Um, also, Simon, I know you do not lead, give lessons, but if people are interested, they can email you, right? Yes. If people are really desperate for a lesson with me, then uh, just message me on Facebook. I think lots of people are on Facebook or Simon Barget yes. at btinternet.com. I will put that. In. I will teach. I will definitely teach if if someone really wants okay a lesson, um, and I, I and I can be flexible on pricing as well. Okay, great. And Mark, you also give lessons. Uh, what's the best way for people to contact you? At the moment, I'm not giving lessons. Um, I I do if I have uh, available time slots. So usually I might have a handful of students, but at the moment I'm a little bit too busy. And then maybe next month. Uh, I get more time and then I might take in a couple of new students. That's very well. Okay. Well, uh, two outstanding world-class level players. I'm sure a lot of people would uh, enjoy learning from you. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, 
Yep. Are you able to see the screen now? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, we're playing, we'll start with a three-point match, see how that goes. We're playing on the beautiful Gammoner X-22 Paul McGreal Memorial Board, which I use exclusively for the backgammon with Grandmasters series and the Grandmaster Challenge series as a tribute to Paul McGreal. And for Mark, we're using the backgammon Galaxy Checkers. I really like these orange checkers. They look really nice. Uh, I changed them a little bit from the ones I showed you before because the dice show up a little better here. Um, so here we go. Let's okay. see. And I'm playing as bottom player, right? I'm the orange yeah, that's checkers. Yeah, I was going to see. So yeah, Mark will be playing the um, orange at the bottom and Simon the, the uh, white at the top. Uh, Three-point match, kind of go through your thought process. Um, I might ask you some questions. We'll have players of different levels. Um, again, the most important things to do are number one, to have fun, and number two, to learn. So here we go. So 6 1 for Mark. Obviously, just make yeah. the bar point. Check. Okay. Now, Simon. Oh, okay. and um, by the way, since you're playing each other, just let me know when you want to roll. Okay, I roll. What is this? A three point match? Three point match. Okay, yes, so sir. I play 24, 23, and 39. Yeah. And just so you know, the pip counts are displayed at the um, upper and lower right hand. Sure. Okay. Good. Yeah. No need to waste time counting pips. I roll. Roll. Okay. That's a hit. Okay. So that's forced. Hmm. Um, so my, I think my first instinct was probably to come out from the 21, mm -hmm. um, but, um, it sort of disconnects my, uh, checkers so that if I'm hit, let's say Mark hits me, um, I'm not guaranteed or I'm not really that likely to make a high anchor. Like, I don't really want to make a 23 or a 24 point anchor. So maybe I'll take that back and consider playing 13-7, which obviously is... <laughs> check. The fourth checker on the mid isn't desperate to go there to be unstacked because um, four checkers on the point isn't that much. Um, I'm not sure. Actually, take it back. I don't want. Again, I don't want to take too much time. Um. So what's going to clinch it is, I suppose, I don't want to get hit. Um, when I'm too far forward. Um, the checker on the seven will be close to home. So I guess I'm just going to come out to the fifteen. Okay, this will be a good one to analyze. Okay, okay. I'm not sure. So it's now, Mark, mm -hmm. I roll. Well, what would what would make you double here? If uh, okay, is there anything you would change in the position that would make you double? Well, Mark's rule says early cubes are always ticks, and usually you need to have your opponent dancing to have the trigger to double. So this is very far from a cube. Of course, we're playing a three point match, so we have to double much more aggressively. But <laughs> it's still still too early. So if this checker on the ten point were on the bar, you'd consider doubling. Or then we might consider doubling. Then yeah. we might have some market losers, but we still just have a one point board. You still need so more. Okay. It's too early. Good, good. Okay. Five, three. Okay. So, the, oh, there are several good plays here, actually. It's really nice just to get the full freedom, be up 24 pips. That's really nice, actually. This might be the best play in double match point. Mm, might even be the best play here. Okay. Let's see the other variation where we hit with a three. Uh -huh. And then the five from here is probably better to play down just to minimize shots. We could also hit on the ace point with 10 men in the zone, unstacking, but it's a direct shot plus four, six, and double five. No, sorry, it's not four, six, just double five. So that would be 12 shots. It's a little bit too much. So I think the other five is better if after we hit. Let's, let's have a look at that play. Yeah, double two and double four would hit two here, right? Oh, yeah, that's true. So two extra, 14 hitters. Okay, so let's see. We hit with a three and play the five down. That's the one I want to look at now. I'm going to do it mochi style, looking at the move that I don't think I'm going to make first. <laughs> um, or am I? Maybe I am making this play, actually. I mean, this play definitely wins more gammons. Definitely wins more gammons. Yeah, 
that's my play. I think it's just, my my biggest blunders comes when I don't don't hit. Come yeah, when I, I when I don't. So I'll, let's just make this play. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you something funny. I did I did a video with Mochi the other night, and uh, I asked him that specific question because you noticed that, and I noticed that too. Usually, when he's looking at two plays. He looks at the second best play first, and then he looks at the top play. And I asked him why he does that, and he says he didn't. He didn't have a reason. That's just why he does it. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I told him it's a. At least you only have to change the checkers once that way. <laughs> uh, okay, so five three for Simon. Make the twenty. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's nice, great nice good roll. roll. Uh -huh, I roll. Okay, hmm. so we don't want to leave shots and lose our racing advantage. Um, it is kind of nice to make the 10 and 11, but we cannot give up the midpoint and leave a shot there. No, that's not going to work. So either we, we also have an incentive to step up with a back checker since we're up in the race, but then we leave a shot, which we don't like. So I think we just have to make the 11 and play 10 to 7 here. That's the only play that doesn't leave a shot out there. I'm a little bit annoyed that I don't get to step up with my back checker here. I right. I really want to step up. Okay, let's just have a look at the step up. Let's do a mochi. Uh -huh. So which that way? would be which way is better. I think it's better to step up with the two to stay out of his most aggressive zone and then make the 10 point. Yeah, okay. So here, I mean, it's not terrible to leave a blot in front of his advanced anchor because just to break the advanced anchor if he wants to hit. But, nah, let me play the other one. No shots. No shots. Yeah, like let's this. do this one. And, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things I remember is you did start with the early 6-1, creating this 6-1 formation. And I remember uh, one of your commentaries, you said, after you do that, most of your sixes are going to be played from the midpoint down. Correct. And this was That's not right. directly from the midpoint, but from the previous role, it was directly because sixes don't play well elsewhere. That's true. I would say that's a very good rule, but I don't think it really applies here because here we're stripping the midpoint and we've got the 11 point made already. So it's more of a rule that applies right after you made the, the seven right, point yeah. six point. I, well, let me see. I think that applies when you've still got two men on the 24. Mark's saying that, say you roll a 6-2, you don't, all the other things being equal, you don't play 24-18 with a 6. When you've right. got yeah, because two usually, you, you, usually, you, usually you would. Two or three, and then you play 13 to 7 with a 6. So usually right. you have another dice to play to split. I would say when he's got the, or when you have the advanced anchor, Simon, I have a big incentive to also get an advanced anchor if I have two men back. But now I don't only have one. It's, um, it's a one man back. I'm up in the race. Yeah. So just don't leave yeah. shots. I think is the most important idea here. Yes, I agree. I think this this is a good valuable learning lesson for the viewers. Not necessarily because it applies directly here. I, I actually agree that it does not apply directly, but it was worth worth mentioning. Mm -hmm. The other mm -hmm. thing that I've kind of learned is, is like a little bit more of theory is six is a unique number on the die because it is the only number where you are always required to move one checker from one quadrant to another or from the bar to the board or from the board to bearing off. No other number always requires you to do that. So initially sixes are very difficult because in the uh, opening position, six can be played here or it can be played down. It's not useful to be played to the two point. Uh, okay, let's continue. Uh, all right. Simon okay. roll. Yep. Four, two. Make the four, make the four. Okay. Mm -hmm. Roll. Two, one. Two, one, okay. <laughs> so ah. I guess I have <laughs> I guess I have to step up with the deuce and then stack with the ace. Stack it. Yes. Is there uh, wait, wait a minute. Else? I mean, there, there is, you could clear the eight point, but I think we like the structure right now. We don't want to break the structure. No, the other one is better. The other one is clearly better. You need to be safe yeah. because of why for the viewers that are watching. I'm up in the race and I'm facing an advanced anchor. I'm never going to be able to prime or blitz. So I'm just playing for the race here. So don't get hit and lose the racing advantage and be launch yep. ready with your rear checker. Right. You have more numbers to, to escape with, from the 22 point than the 24. Way more. Yeah. Okay. Roll, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Double three. Both points. That is nice. Okay. 
Okay, roll. Okay, now. Mm, okay. Okay, come in with the ace. And slot with the deuce. Yeah, no other play available. Not okay, don't roll. Actually. Don't roll. <laughs> Just in case. Um... Yeah, I mean, first thing to say is if I was playing, I do play three point matches on Galaxy almost exclusively speed time settings. And if I was playing, I would just cube immediately. But I'm just checking. Um, to make sure. I mean, it's obvious that th threes hit, but even without hitting, the position is crushing. Um, I don't know what what my, there's not really much to say. It's a kind of an obvious um, an obvious position. Mark has got no flexibility whatsoever. So after his two one, he had to the previous two one, not this one. He had to put six oh, checkers on the one. six point, and now oh. it's equally inflexible but now there's a there's a shot um i don't think it's i should without giving too much away to mark because obviously he would know anyway i don't think it's too good because there could be sequences after which um I don't hit Mark or on the 21 or point on him, and then he can manage to escape and or make his four point. So, you know, I just guess I don't have anything um, extra interesting to say. I'm going to double. Okay. And then for the um, novice or intermediate players, what are you looking at in terms of the aspects of this position that make it strong? Um, aside from what I said, um so one thing you always to look at is the pip count yeah. so i'm six 16 well, i'm actually 16 pips down so all other things being equal that would argue against doubling um but in this position pip count's not really important because um because that's a difficult question to answer well it is important putting that take. aside what it is important for the take it is, yeah, it's just, I would have a tough time ask, answering exactly why. I would deflect that question and just say, well, the the doubling, strength of this doubling decision comes from the fact that I've got the best four-point board. Yes. The fact that Mark is behind it, <clears throat> not even at the edge of the prime, that I'm going to hit Mark with any three, two-one or double-one, and also... Aside from that, if I roll a double six, a double a double six, I will point a mark on the one point, and that is a devastating roll for Mark. Most of the time, it just becomes too good to double by a long way. If I haven't doubled this go, then there's also a double four. So these two rolls are rolls that don't do anything to that to that vulnerable checker on the four point or 21 as we're looking at it on your screen and i'm just just want to make sure i'm not missing any other roles so like let's say your worst role may be um maybe six two and if you want to it might not be the best play you would just escape your back checker and play 24 16 in which case um you, you're still in a commanding position so I would say to not just novice players, but most players, if that if your worst role or some of your worst roles leave you in a commanding position, then you're certainly in doubling territory. You could be beyond doubling territory, but you're certainly at a starting point um, strong enough to double. Yeah, I, I agree with all those things. And I think the the key aspects that I was kind of recognizing when that you mentioned is the the strong the stronger board and the inflexible structure for orange with the stack and all the stripped points. Um, now, in terms of the doubling decision, uh, we 
we do have players at different levels. So I, I think it's useful to talk about uh, the market losing sequences. And we just uh, talked about Cube Like a Boss, and you discussed that really well um, in that book and in other books, Mark. Can you please explain to our viewers uh, what is a market losing sequence? Yeah, uh, market losing sequence is when uh, it becomes a pass on your next turn. Um, I think that uh, Simon's cube here is very easy to find because the threats are so great. So if you just become a threat detector and threats by threats, I mean actually market losing threats, but that's a tough thing to calculate over the board. So I like to say you just look for threats and that can be a blitzing threat, priming threat or a racing threat. And here, this, since this is a middle game position or stage one position, you can just apply. There are many different things you can apply here. You can ap apply the Pratt uh, system. I don't really like that too much. I spent my chapter on middle game positions in Masterclass kind of arguing for an improved Pratt version. We could call it Prep, uh, Prime, Blitz, and Race, or pri Prime, Race, and Blitz. Uh, where you get one point for a significant advantage in each of the game plans. Uh, if it's two out of three, it's double take. And if it's three out of three, it's double pass. So here, despite Simon being behind in the race, so Simon said the race didn't really matter. That's true for his point of view. It didn't because he already has a big priming and blitzing advantage. But from my point of view, it matters because it means that Simon only has two out of three advantages here. So this would be a take. Then there is the complication that we're playing a three-point match where the doubling point and take points are they're uh, very shifted towards the aggressive side for the Doppler and the passive or conservative side for the taker. And that's what makes this a difficult decision for me, actually. This is an easy take for money, but in a three-point match, it's not that easy to take it. I'm still leaning towards the take because I think I win this game like maybe even 30% of the time or more, but I'm going to lose some gammons because that, uh, I think it was Wilkinson who called that the four-point board, the barrel. So you got the rack, the barrel, and the beast. And the <laughs> barrel is really, really strong. Really, really strong. But I mean, he's got over half his rolls are not particularly great for him. Yeah. Um, where I'm, I have a great, good position. Maybe it's like 50-50 game. Maybe I'm still a little bit of an underdog. And if he hits me with a three, I still have winning chances. You know, Maybe it's down to 20% then or something like that. But I'm not really sure about the take, actually. You could also apply uh, Woolsey's Law uh, on the doubling side when you're not sure whether your opponent has a take or pass, double. So Simon had an easy decision here. I think I have a tough decision. Yeah, uh, you, you discussed this a lot. Uh, I, I had a couple of comments. This is actually a very educational one, so I appreciate your comments. Um, a couple of the things is um, in your new book, The Masterclass, that is really an outstanding book. And I, I know you're aware that I had the privilege of proofreading it. And you have, an out, you have multiple, all the chapters are outstanding. But the one in particular that you talk about in what you call undefined positions, where both players have one or more checkers back, I had a double. I think that's that's a definitely a really good read uh, for the viewers. The other thing that I was I thought would be interesting is let's say it goes double take, and then you have a double three to play. You yeah, make the bar a, point, or you hit, or, yeah, oh, you, with double three for yeah. him. Yeah. Oh, he can hit and switch and play down. You know, hit and switch and play down. Brilliant, yeah. brilliant roll, blitz yeah. roll. I'm actually leading. I'm starting to think about passing this cube in this score because this is a clear double take for money. So the doubling window, you know, it, it's not really shifting one full step at three way, three way, maybe like half a step. So this could be a pass at the score. So yeah. we will look um, at it afterwards. I, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. going to take it. I'm going I'm going to, I, I, mean, uh -huh. I won't say anything about the take pass decision. I just wanted to say, without confusing people, if I can express this clearly, three away, three away is really tricky because um, I have experienced that you can actually take in some senses more deeply because when you lose a gammon on a two cube, the two cube gammon win for your opponent is inefficient in the sense that he exceeds his victory mark by one point. So in other words, and tell me what you think, Mark and Alex, if you have a position, let's say this is this position, I have 63% single game wins, but 35% gammons, then because Mark wins so many single games, he can take the risk of losing the gammon, losing the match in one, one fell swoop. 
because he can just win the game 37% time, 37% of the time. Is that logic correct? Is that something that's... The way I think about it is that the, the gamblers take point at three way, three ways, 25%. That's significantly higher than for money. What you're saying about the overkill winning of uh, four point in one game, it's true. There is, but there's also kind of a premium bonus attached to winning the game, the whole match in this game. So the two things, I, I feel like they cancel each other out a little bit. So overall, there might be some extreme positions with rather low winning chances and rather high gammon chances where it's a little bit inefficient, but uh, that's yes, rare. That's I would I say you, you, you're you way more aggressive at three-way, three-way. And it's m far more difficult to take um, a cube. It's probably shift in a gammonish position like this one. It probably shifts like 200 milli points or something uh, compared to money game. Yeah, this will be this will be really good. Afterwards, when we do the analysis, we'll change the score and see what happens. And um, I think you guys know that I'm into math and theory and things like that. So you can so we can look at the gammon value on a two cube at three away, three away, um, and so forth. Um, There's oh. another thing that I just thought of is uh, if you're playing this position in a in a real tournament, I would lean more towards taking because a lot of players they don't know how to play the upcoming roles here for white. There are some some lurking some mm -hmm. uh, traps here. Uh, you got to know how to play the checkers. Um, I, I'm really unsure about this this uh, cube. I, I'm gonna take it, but okay, they, yeah, so, I'm, I'm so not sure. Simon, Simon will season. double and Mark will take. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, five three. I just hit and come out to the sixteen. Instant regret. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Obviously, roll six one. Okay. Okay. Good and. We have to fight for freedom. Let's go to the 18 point, right? Because everything else sucks. Yeah, let's do that. Got to keep up the fight. That was part of the reason for doubling is because you don't have spares elsewhere to play good sixes and other route rolls. Yeah. Okay. So now you have to roll. So six, five. So the six obviously hits. I think the five goes to the 11 point. So just to note, like... For if if I wanted to, for whatever reason, maybe to get builders closer, I could play 13-8. But then, um, although I guess it's duplicated, his 2-6 would... It is very well duplicated, actually. Maybe that's not... A, uh, maybe I'm going to scratch that point. Anyway, I'm going to hit and probably still play 16-11. Yeah, because it gives me more... I think it gives me more numbers to, well, okay, no, it doesn't give me more numbers. In fact, the other way. Gives me more numbers. Okay, in any case, no, this is fine. So what I'm looking at, which isn't the 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 uh, decisive factor, is how many numbers will now close the seven point. And um, this is probably more numbers, even though there are fewer checkers um to actually make the seven point so yeah. i'm gonna do this yeah okay i like the other play really interesting the ultra aggressive yeah just make a ball well, play I think. but it can't be a big mistake i just think the other one is better okay obviously you want to roll yeah three two so okay. the two yeah and slot with a three behind uh-huh uh yeah i overlooked the fact that i would just have a build on the eight point i don't know why yeah, That's yeah, you can make a six prime much faster. Okay, I mean, normally I would just play 11 2. The thing that's de the detraction or detractor from this play is mainly for me the double hit, the 2 5, which I don't like. Um, just take it back a second. The alternative is that I could just make the uh, seven point and play down. Which is really strong, actually. Um, but it's hard to analyze. This is strong, but I think he would probably be happy to make the two point with a one. If I did this, 
Um, just take it back a second, actually. This is like a play where you, where I feel I'm falling into a trap. In fact, the more I look at it, the more I just like um, making the seven point and playing 13-8. But I don't think I'm going to do that. Of course, if you, if you hit, you can just play thirteen nine. That's a, that's another way, and another thing you can do with the four. And one other thing that I I, I guess I'm not vocalizing, but probably considering subconsciously, is that if you you hit, then he has to um, play his other number, possibly in not not with one of the checkers in that are in my inner board so he might have to break um something although having said that he's got spare fives and fours from the six point so that's not true but he would have to dump a checker to the two point or the one point um okay take take it i don't know why i'm taking so long with this decision just take it back a second all the way it's a pretty difficult decision primer I, well i don't know well, then that gives it away. So I, that would probably mean that I should play 11, 7, 13 to 8. Yeah, there's a lot to think about here. I mean, and I'm not I'm not doing a great job of um, conveying what, what I'm just sort of thinking about it it's instead, which is what we, me and Mark are both doing. I'm thinking and trying to, to vocalise it. Um, yeah. Okay, just for learning purposes, as this is the excuse I always give myself, I'm gonna I'm gonna make the seven point and play thirteen eight. Okay. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't play but just to just to show that I've seen it. You could play twenty fifteen with the five, but I think for you you prefer to have the man on the eight point either as a builder for the two point if you don't get hit, or um, uh, you can make the six prime with the five. Yeah, but this is not. I don't think this is a play that I would make if I had, you know, a few seconds on the clock. Yeah. Okay. okay. So like this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would have blissed. I would have. Gone <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's, it's true what Simon is saying that like it's difficult. He tricked me. Because we, well, we. It's not the same as playing a real match where you're just focusing. It's very difficult to also explain. It really ruins the pattern recognition. Um, I think this is a prime versus blitz dilemma when that many men in the zone, my weak inner board, I feel kind of relieved when you just make a prime play. I can just roll a one here and then save the gammon or maybe even counter prime. But let's see. Yeah. I think this play five. might, might, I think you might win more games with this play, but you definitely don't win as many gammons. The other thing I notice is uh, sixes from this position are really good, whereas sixes from the other position are really bad. After having really. for, for me, I yeah, mean, for you from good. the bar. Like why it's six five, six four, they're not good. Six four is good. Okay, six well, five. Well, if you're if if Mark were on the bar, six five, six four, and six three dance. Now um six six okay. is good. yeah. I take a point with six three, but I'm not so sure about six five, six two. Yeah. Double six is weird. Okay, so but you might be right, Sam. It's just I would have made the other play, but I'm not con that confident. It's it was no, no, no. I would cool never. This dilemma. is not my. This is not my normal play. That's yeah, why yeah. Explicitly, yeah. This will be a good okay. one to analyze. Cool. Okay, Let's so see. six roll. one. Okay, oh, oh, six one. Oh. Yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, so oh. the six has to be played out, and the know. ace, the six first, and then we just have to see: Are we missing any tactics here? No. Let's just step up. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, but you I would have, I would have bad got sixes. hit back, right? I wouldn't be happy with a six one either way. Ah, but I don't know. You yeah. you you would have had a lot of return shots. We'll see. But six one is it's six one this way is pretty good for you because you can just now roll a six and and link up. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um you're, yeah, that's my move. Yeah, I'm in perfect. the interest of time, we'll move a little faster because I know you guys need to go soon. Three one. Okay, just hit and come up to the 21. Okay. So he's definitely going to roll a two. Ouch. <laughs> this is obvious. Oh, almost. Oh. One. Okay, one, and place 17 to 14. Okay. Yeah. All right. Five, three. Okay, it's a great roll. So I play 21, 13. 
So can I just say, well, I'm not going to take too long, just similar idea. So obviously you're not going to break the seven point to blitz, but the reason, kind of the reason I did what I did with the, whatever it was role, was it five, four, similar to this, that yes. I had a better thing to do with one of the other checkers that wasn't associated with the blitz. Yeah. So here and, I had a great and, thing to do with the, the checker from the 21 point. And also just to, Mitchy talks about F13, which I would never have come up with a concept, which is brilliant. Now I've got all 13 checkers kind of free and in play. Yeah. yeah. And, but I had a blood in my home board on the other position. Right. That was yeah, yeah, of course. But yeah. Here I don't. Here I don't. So this one, I think, is an easy, easier play, easier decision for you. The mm -hmm. other one was difficult. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. 6-4. Okay. So we need to get out with the 6. And uh, I think so. And then here, the best four would definitely be 17 to 13. Let me just have a look here. We're still trailing by 24 pips, but we could counter prime. Yeah, it's the yeah, it's the best move. Yeah. Liberate a back checker to not lose a gamut. Okay, so five is 13-8 for sure. Um, however much I would like to slot the back of the prime, I don't think... Uh, it's not too bad, but I don't want to get it with twos. So Mark's ones are duplicated. So he wants to come up with the one, but um, now I'm going to change my watch. Shit. We're going to have youth watching this, Simon. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to play 1310. I have lots of reasons, but I need to kind of get a move on because I've got a I'm going to do I'm going to change my mind. Okay. Yeah. I think that was a cool play, but I would have chosen the other one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Double one. Oh, oh wow. Okay, so let's okay. step up and let's hit. That's the first two aces. I didn't consider double one. <laughs> I didn't and here... consider it. No, I was I should have considered it. I think it the best priming point here is still on the 11 point. It's better than... So there's no reason to slide over to the 10 point. I want to block his sixes. Yeah, this one opens up for him to play a six from his anchor. So I think we just make the 12 point here. It's actually nice to just, just consolidate. Yeah, and then play 14 to 13. I think... Does it make sense to have flexibility? No, this is good. No blots. So in case things go down wrong, I'm not... I'm consolidated. Yeah, that's right. Cool. Just in case, because of the stronger board, the other thing yeah. would be like maybe go like this and then like this for maximum spares to make. Oh, these... that's too much. Uh, that's, that's too, too much, much you, because you of could, the board. You could yeah. have played thirteen to twelve with the last one. Right. Okay. But yeah. Double three. Okay. Ooh, one. So one hit loose on the two point, and then play ten to seven. That was a nice roll. Now I need to survive. No. Okay. So I just want to say, oh, okay, you've rolled. This is exactly what I didn't want to happen. I didn't want to have um, another checker behind this prime. And now I'm going to, I'm effectively crunching, although I'm obviously going to make the one point here. It's a kind of a crunch. This is not the checker I, checkers I want to move. I want to move the guys on the, to, I want to move the guy. First priority is 22, I think, and then 20. So I don't want to move this, the guy on the seven, and I don't want to break the prime, even though it kind of, does something questionably good, so right. this is annoying. Okay. Double four, no. Okay, now some of my fives are not going to cover, but this one does. Okay, and I can still crunch with like three two. Three two is a cracker. Three three is a terrible roll. Yeah, yeah, of course this. I feel like I blundered the take. Let's see. Three one is a cracker. Hmm. Oh, wow. Like this? No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Three, six to three. Wow. It's not over yet. So, getting here hurts, obviously, if I leave it there. 
and makes it much more difficult to bring my chickens home. So is there any gain? Something says that there's a gain to to be had by leaving it there. And I suppose the gain was illusory to me. I thought like if I come up to the 21, then I get to escape with more numbers. And although that's true, my fives, which coming up to the 21 would give, would give me extra fives to escape, are gonna come out from the 20. So although I guess it is a benefit to step up to the 21, I'm gonna just cut my losses. I'm just gonna play six to three with the one, six to five. Okay. That's a tricky one. I mean, again, that's tricky. I, I agree with the play. Okay, it makes sense. But so six is a great number. This is the checker I want to move. Immediately I want to and the checker, the next checker I want to move, guess what? Is the 20. So this is a great number. I can move both of them. Yeah. Now I really need to produce a six. Wrong six. Oh. Or two just about plays. So what am I gonna do with the two and does it matter probably yes so if i stay on the 11 what i'm noticing is that if he comes in let's say with a six and decides to stay there i have fives to hit him pick and pass with but i've got fives from my little semi-anchor on the 16 but i don't have fours threes and twos but then the do i really want to come closer because then he can just jump over me with certain sixes I'm going to play 11 to 9. Again, it's tricky. It's probably not going to be a big deal, but one of them is right. Yeah. But he's not going to stay there with many. Okay, 6 5, of course. Leave all the shots. Bring around the corner. Mm -hmm. This is my chance. Come no. on. 5 4. 5 4 makes the board. Okay. So 5 2. Um, we'll def we'll definitely yeah we'll probably do that m most likely yeah five to four five to three okay not the best barrel structure but okay so it's two to the three point for sure okay I'm sorry sorry for taking you back all the time what am I no problem okay so two to the three point for sure one off and four to one. Whether or not I'm guaranteed a gamut, I just want to play safe to some extent anyway. And I should, yeah. Yeah, you're up by over 100 pips. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, of course, good. I should win a gamut, but I'm still thinking about I want to take the checker off. And then, uh, I think it was the right place, Simon, because I think you win a gamut every time. I know, I'm cutting up. I'm over. I'm over. Yeah. All right, so six got, uh, and five, you want to come in like this? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. I like that. I, oh, my small... Hope has been crushed. Okay, let's play uh, 19 to 16 and 8 to 6. The other thing I look, I play against XG all the time, so I'm used to like saving the gamuts. <laughs> One of the things I like it to does, do is like here. spread out the checkers a little bit and still get a crossover, but I don't think it's a big difference. It, it, it's not a big difference. Yeah, it's yeah. like one milli point or something here. I get a decision. Are you playing it for me? Okay. Um, okay, so the deuce goes into the six point, and the six is you thirteen to say, nine. You could, say, you need definitely need yeah, my move boxes. Yes. That's my move, Alex. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Come on, Alex. Okay. <laughs> won't say that, won't okay. Go to end. <laughs> One, two, Why three. Not? Okay. We'll take a break for a moment and analyze it. Okay, now we'll analyze it. Outstanding play by both. We'll kind of look through the interesting positions because there, there were a lot of good ones. The straightforward ones were like that. And then the 6-4. Yeah, this is the one where you were looking at coming down here. But you decided on this. Hmm. He really considered it, though. You were not sure, Simon. Neither was I. I thought your play was better. Uh, because you don't have like when the, the slotting plays 13 to 7 it's usually good if you i call it a pseudo back game position that's when you have three men back but one, you have a deep anchor so like the 24 point and the 23 point and then you got another scattered blot that's when you want to play the 13 to 7 but i guess that it's, it's just really bad to come to the 15 point here huh it's like sixes and threes that hits and you're disconnected so maybe we can get away with it to, despite being split 
with the back takers and no anger. Yeah, we can look at this position, modify it like this. Is this what you're referring to? Uh, yeah, this one is much easier to play the, the slotting play. This one is clear, actually. Yeah. 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 But it's also clear with the other one. So this one was just easier for me because that's kind of like the positions that I've studied. This one, what made it difficult for me here was the fact that he was, he didn't have an anchor. He was split. But I guess it still applies the same pseudo back game rules that if the six plays really bad, then 13 to seven is a good alternative. Yeah, the other things that I look at in this position is that you have three checkers back in the race. Uh, so you're behind in the race anyway. Additionally, if you're hit from here, it's you lose more ground in the race, but you keep this one um, slotted. So you're able to make an advanced anchor easier on the 21 point, whereas um, after this, it's much harder to make an advanced anchor. Uh, Do you anything well, else to say, Simon, about this position, or should we yeah, just? Yeah, that's why I said you got to make the you've got to make the twenty one. Yeah. So just park the checker there, but okay. obviously I didn't know or I would have played it. Hey, Alex, one of my moves haven't hasn't been analyzed. The first one. The first XG one. I think I think times. you got it right. I'll guess. I think so too, but it didn't it didn't uh, count in the analysis. You should you should uh, analyze it. Oh, what is it? Oh yeah, I'm gonna do a further analysis at the end. Uh, no and need. I'll it's just to get the right round. amount of decisions for each player. Right, 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 right. Um, so this is the next interesting decision. Yeah. The double and the take. Okay. So what comments do you have about this now that we're seeing the analysis? You want to begin, Simon? Well, I thought it was a pass for starters. So I don't really understand the position, but... Um, um, I'll, I'll tell you why I thought it was a pass because um, if you let's say I well I guess hitting you with a three is is li less likely but let's say I do and you come in with a two four or a two three or a one three you have to just dump another checker behind and I think in my pattern recognition despite the fact that you've got like a prime, although it's a bit ugly, I tend to heavily disfavor ugly primes, especially where there are blots like just chucked in front of it, which I can just like pick up. So I think if it makes sense, I, I'm very good at spotting positions where I can attack and crush and after I hit with threes, it does resemble one of those crushing positions. But I guess what I need to learn is that despite that, and I guess Mark's going to talk about the race, that even if he does come in and, and dump another checker behind me, he's still got those blocking points. And as we saw when I was trying to escape after I closed my board, I, I had to break my prime. So they have more blocking ability than they appear to do, at least from my perception. Yeah. I think uh, in, a, in a middle game position or stage one or undefined uh, stage, whatever we want to call it, um, the, the, the game has such a long future. It's very difficult, even if you just look at the upcoming dice distribution to kind of evaluate where the game will go. So very often we just make a comparison out of it. So all these systems like the prep, the Pratt, the Olsen model, whatever uh, model you want to use, uh, basically is a comparison contest. And I think here when you compare it, it's like the simplest model would just be the prep, prime, race and blitz. And you got two out of three. So two out of three, that's uh, a double take. Um, you could make I, it as simple, I, simple as that. I I'm have going to go out on a limb. I was just wanted to say that I think that the equity for the doubler will get higher on a rollout. Maybe not that much. I mean, because I wanted to, of course, because I thought it was a pass. But I think it will, get to, <laughs> I think it will go to 900. I would... Okay. I'll, I'll bet yeah. 10 pounds. We'll, could, we'll could take be, a look. Because yeah. XG always overvalues the race. Yeah. But... Yeah. Maybe that's just maybe that's just me wanting to be right. I, I think in a middle game position like this, it's not gonna. It might have a small impact, but it's not gonna be decisive. Uh, it's a very it's a very common position this uh, middle game style. 
Um, oh. Another thing, uh, another, I think from the doubling side, I think Simon had a much easier decision here, N namely because when you are doubling, you have the, you can detect threats. You know, you just detect threats and the greater the threats are, the more incentive you have to double. So the threats are huge here. So he just doubles. And on the take side, you, you, you don't have the threat variable to, to use as, a, as an indicator. So that's, that's just a single uh, dimension function. It's a variable of your equity. Are well, you better I, off I or think, worse off uh, by taking or passing? Yeah, I think maybe what you're saying is that you don't have, you have to go through two, um, although you, you said that you probably don't do this yourself, but you have to go through two dice roll sequences or two dice rolls. When, when you're doubling, I, 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 in teaching, I saw that people refuse to look at um, the dice roll of their opponent, even though it can be more decisive in a doubling decision than your own dice roll. But for taking and passing, you definitely have to like, visualize like, OK, well, he hits me. And then what about what I roll? You know, and so that can be a little bit more difficult. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the tactical side of the game. It is more difficult. The easier thing is just to talk about structures and concepts and principles, the tactics yeah. of the game. You had you kind of have to learn by doing. You know, there's no really no way around it. And of there's course, no I'm looking, there's no shortcut. Of course, I'm looking at the upcoming dice distribution here. So I, my thought process was just like looking at what are your crushing numbers. It's a three on the twenty-one point. So that's a direct three plus two one plus double one. That's fourteen. Then you got double six and double four that are crushers. Yeah. So yeah. that's 16 strong numbers. Then probably double five and double three are probably also pretty good numbers. So let's add them there. And so it's like half of your rolls are really good. I'm not dead when that and happens. The weird, the weird thing is double two is not fantastic. I don't even know because I'm very I bad think at you switching. So I think you yeah. switch. I think you switch. And play to the 11, but still, yeah. and play down to the 11, but still that's not, Double and I two think, is a good number, but it's not. So it's not a crush. Not yeah, at all. I don't, we wouldn't count that as your 18 good rolls uh, where no, you lose your mind. No, it's, I'm still, it, in the, no. still in the game after you roll double No, no, no. Two. I'm saying that there's plenty of rolls that are so, not that So if you, if you wanted to do like the tactical analysis, I would go like this, and I did it in my mind. Like 18 of your rolls are good, and I win maybe only just one in five games there or something, maybe even less. Like, so, so that would make, give me like, uh, like three or four wins out of 36. But then on the other 18, it's like a 50-50 game, basically. Uh, so, right. uh, well, I don't, yeah, maybe, maybe so, not that. So good, I, I've but... got maybe like eight or nine. Maybe I'm a slight underdog. Let's say I have eight wins. Uh, but that still gives me like 11, 12, maybe even 13 wins out of 36. Uh, yeah. In this I... So I, I was pretty uh... sure that I had high winning chances, right? So that's why I was leaning towards the take. Yeah, that's, I didn't that's consider, a good point. I didn't consider 6-5. I think I considered two six, but six five, six four. So that's four numbers I didn't consider. By the way, one of the traps here in this position is that I think that you have to play six five, six four, six three, six two. Oh, sorry, not six three. That's a hitter. Six five, six four, six two. Two down. Two down yeah, slot. Yeah, I mean, that's no, the place. That's, you I you probably would have found it, but most most players, players wouldn't have. That, yeah. yeah, they wouldn't know that, right? Which. Again, in a, in, a, in a money game situation where you're playing against somebody who might not be grandmaster level, is this would be yeah. an easy take. Easy, easy that's, take. That's actually correct, Mark. Um, and 5-4 as well. I'm looking at the dice distribution on, on the other screen. 5-4 is easy, two down. That's oh, by the way, my 5-4 is right because I can see it on the board. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I would have gone for the blitz attack there. We're going we're gonna to look at that in a moment. The so other... maybe my 3-1 was wrong. Maybe breaking the board. Maybe not leaving the, the point slotted. Was bad. Yeah. I don't understand it though, but I mean, see. it's difficult. Let's see. Yeah, we'll look at that in, in just a moment. The other comments I, I was going to make is um, looking at the second role is important, especially in prime versus prime situations. And I wanted to show you um, a, a couple of things here. Number one, um, I know you guys know I like this dice distribution analysis, and I don't know if you've seen this one. It's for a cube decision. So all of um, Simon's next rolls are at the top uh, from double one through double six and an average at the bottom. And then Mark's rolls after that are here on the left with an average on the right. This image displays only the market losing sequences. So what, what it displays is there are 1,296 cells and the equity, uh, the number is not in here because it would be too small, uh, but the equity for each sequence is in that cell. For example, in the cell in the upper left. 21 squared, right? Not the 
36 squared. Right, right. But that, that would be weighted for the 441. You're right. Um, so the first cell is, let me see, the equity after rolling a double one followed by a double one and so forth. So you can see uh, what happens with the, all of these threes. These are very strong and double six is very strong. And what the, the way this is displayed is if the equity is less than one, uh, the cell is red because that's a non-market losing sequence. If the equity is one or greater, the cell will be white to green and the darker the green, the more you lose your market by. So double sixes are crushing. So um, that's, that's what uh, we're looking at. The other thing that uh, we were talking about is perhaps changing the score would affect things or changing the position, right? So Mark, you were saying like for money? That this is a cube for money. That was what made me think of passing. But in, in a three point match, the, 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 the doubling window, it doesn't shift a full action. It shifts like half an action. It shifts yeah, like 200, you... 200 yeah. millipoints or so in a gamma-ish position. So yeah. I was still, I, I thought I was still in the take uh, range despite it's still it being a, a double for money. If right. you change this it is, to three away, two away, from... and I'm leading, then it's a big pass. That's a, now away. it changes a full step in the doubling window. So something that's a double take is a double pass at uh, yeah. three away, two away. What about four away, three away? That's the same, gammon go light. No, it's so, higher, much higher equity, it's even worse. But four away, four it away. It's even worse, yes, but well. Four away, four away will be a pass. Four, four away, four away, I think it's a pass too. Barely. Oh, it's close. Okay. It's close. Yeah. And what about like four way, five way? Take. No. Take. Almost, yeah. Because you then... see, if you just remember that, you can see that, like, you can just memorize that in a gamma position, four way, five away is better for the taker for the five away than four way, four away. Just because right. he's down by one point. Right. So yeah. it's as simple. Yeah. But, but it's, uh, it's the score where even though you're, uh, yeah, trailing in the match, you want to be more careful about taking. Right, yeah. right. Because yeah, but it's still not as good four. as it's still not as good as um, four way four way. Though. No, but now you're yeah. not trailing in the match, so it's not as paradoxical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I don't really want to belabor the position too much, but I do like learning about these things. Is there anything uh, in this position that you could change to make it uh, no double or to make it a pass? Well, by the way, Alex, I, point, it's nothing. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's the big difference. Then it's a no doubt. By the way, Alex, I saw the market losing sequences was forty percent. That was probably also more or less my intuitive guess after yeah. running through the, because it's like he, half of his rolls are great and uh, he loses his market almost all of those, but not quite because I can roll two one or double one or maybe a double two is also pretty good. Um, and then on the other eighteen, uh, where he doesn't hit me, uh, he basically never loses his market. So that the forty percent market losing uh right, sequences okay. it, it, it was more or less my intuitive guess yeah but obviously i don't run i don't compute 1296 of course, uh, of course. combinations it's just an right. intuition yeah thing. um so was there anything that you said i mean this this would make it not a double right well oh, yeah this uh is yeah if it's not a double if it's a no it can't, can't be because if it's like 100 tape on plus plus <laughs> three and now you've got yeah you're 36 pips 34 pips down this is nothing with a oh oh, oh, oh okay so you're what not about gonna... this oh that's a completely different position type no it's oh, no it's past, right? what have you done he, i, he I made, made five prime made the it's a completely now different it's uh, position type yeah yeah let's go back to the game alex i we, i gotta go in five okay. minutes yeah. so i want to we'll see that uh, this is the one these were close. Oh, just go, just go. Um, can you just go ah, consecutively, okay. really quickly? Oh yeah. So just for my OCD. Okay, fine. Five, three. Okay. Okay, thirty-eight was fine. That okay. was obviously the only play. And this one was, yeah. These two were close, but it was. Uh, I would have made the other one, but it's close. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't make it doesn't really uh -huh. matter. But we'll go through the interesting ones, and I'm going to send you the files too, so we can look at. Okay, it here we go. Okay, so it's a super close go. call. Priming or blitzing. Priming wins more games. Blitzing wins more, uh, more win uh, gammons. And when you blitz, it was also a decision what which which four to play. Do you play down and have seven and nines to cover, but no doubles? I think you pointed that uh, out well, correctly, he, Simon. The he, double hitters are a bit annoying, and it's not just two five. It's also two six. Yeah. Well, well my my insta play was eleven to two. Yeah. 
But I think I, you point I know, out yourself. I, I know very well that this is dodgy because you just have two checkers that can be two six and two five and two five. Yeah, you mentioned uh, two five, but there was also two six. Yeah, I didn't say two six. I don't know why. But yeah, yeah. yeah. You okay. just give away far too much. It's such a big swing. So why would you do it? Whereas yeah. with the prime making play, it's not as good. I mean, obviously it's gammonish non versus non gammonish, but let's just simplify and say it's not quite as good in a way, but it's just solid. And there's there's a, just as an aside, there's a satisfaction in making the solid play over the kind of standard gammonish play, especially when it's close to being right. So I'm quite happy that sure. I did this kind of um, good. Okay. You know, what was yeah. the other thing we were going to look the at? Five quickly? three. There's a blunder. There's one more blunder. There, there, yeah, that was where you said. Yeah, I, I I wanted to make the prime and you know. Ah. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, that's too much because you could get counter primed. Yeah. Yeah, you could get counter primed. Yeah, you could get counter primed. And I've and punished then... you with with double one. Uh, oh, okay, the double so one see. was like. Oh, it was right to switch. Hmm. Okay. Like this so resulting maybe... in this position. Let's try to figure out why is it better because that's what I that was the question over the board. Do I and I ended up with the wrong decision. I ended up wanting the eleven point rather than the ten point. But there's something wrong in my understanding here. So the ten point is good. It, what was the point. right play? Sorry, I, I just looked away for a this second. This one. This one is the 24, right play. 24, 23, 13, 12. I'm shifting over. just for kind of compactness, but I, Com I, I, yeah. I bought your logic. I was like, okay, yeah, you just want to keep the eleven point because I, I like to block your sixes. sixes rather than fives, yeah. But I guess that that matters less than the compactness. Also, I have a nice flexibility behind the prime here to make the eleven and nine point afterwards. And to be honest, also, I didn't think of that uh, factor. Also, you're bearing on the in on the four point, which I kind also of true. never really consider. But I mean, I, are you ever going to want to give up the ten to make the four? Possibly. Maybe one day in the future. Could I don't be. know. I but I, I didn't see the flexibility of this play behind my prime here, where I could rather easily make the 9 and 11 point later after uh, switching. So, okay, that was my small mistake. I guess that's the only one. What does the PR say, uh, Alex? Let's see at the end. So I'm going to do a further analysis and see, and I'll send it to you. Uh, in the interest of time, we'll uh, go ahead and conclude in just a moment i really want to thank both of you it was actually very valuable how not to suck at backgammon and neither of these players uh sucks at backgammon so uh, read that book and, and you'll get better the one question i like to ask uh each of you if i may uh, in the series um uh, people want to become a grandmaster so if you have one piece of advice to kind of get to that level what would that be let's start with simon since you're at the top please to become a grandmaster, so that implies, or uh, that that they they they're at a good level already. Correct. And they want to play, let's say, under four or three point five or whatever level grandmaster is evolving into these days. Um, th th they would have to start study, um, you know, and that means use extreme gammon and. Go over their mistakes, the, uh, their their match mistakes, and in going over them, have some system whereby they have can be sure that they've committed those mistakes to memory. What I mean by that is that they have known with you know that you have to be honest with yourself that you you understand what that mistake why that was a mistake and you understand um you, you also need to know whether or not in some to some degree you will be able to eliminate that mistake in the future or maybe you need to say to yourself well i won't eliminate that mistake immediately from my game but i'll be able to slowly do it and so in a sense you have to monitor your mistakes and make sure that you're slowly slowly kind of it's almost like that game whack-a-mole your mistake will pop up you need to make sure that the mistake is not going to pop up again you need to put it to bed completely and the way that you do that is by understanding what's going on um i will i would like to offer a ray of hope getting to like bmap grandmaster level is not 
I think for some people that really want to do it is not terribly, terribly difficult. You need quite a good memory uh, and you just need to basically do what I said, just go over everything that, that you do and know why you did it and what you're not getting, what you're not understanding. Um, so it's possible. It, no, it can good. definitely about, be done. What about you, Mark? I think uh, the easiest way is to compete online. So, and when you play, you play to compete. So you play with focus and then you always analyze your games afterwards uh, with the uh, XG. So on Galaxy, you've got the four ply analysis built in. So tell us about even... the Galaxy because a lot of people don't know about it. I want to give you an opportunity to plug it. I hope that all of your listeners, Alex, knows about Pagama Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, you got the four ply analysis from XG built in. So I, I never even open up the XG desktop uh, software anymore. I just review my games on the phone or on the computer. I think that's the most important thing. You've got to compete and the more the better. And uh, and then you analyze your games. Then uh, you got you can use the Blunder database. Um, yes, I that's think a good one. To refer to what Simon was uh, referring to, like you got to keep your blunders from staying down, not coming up, uh, popping up again. So you need to wait. Don't let them pop up. Don't let them keep <laughs> popping up. Then you're not, you're not hitting them properly yeah. in the first yes. place. So I think uh, the blunder database is a perfect tool for that. Uh, that's how I learned the game. I just did it the hard way. I did it manually with screenshots, put it in folders, study like 80 games of blitz cubes and trying to figure out what is the pattern in this position category. Uh, so that's another good tip. And of course, you got to read the books. Why right? not? You know, there's so much, uh, not just this book, but uh, Michi's books, uh, the masterclass with Mochi. Like there's so many great books now. Uh, so why not just, that's the quickest way to download uh, information into your brain, reading books. Uh, but yes. you cannot get, become a grandmaster without competing. you got to get yourself out there and compete. And you get the rub, rub off, what do you call it? rub off effect. You know when you, you uh, I, I heard there's Joe Rogan was talking about this in a podcast I listened to today. Actually, he said that he always talks about the UFC fighters, mm -hmm. and he says that uh, sometimes when these fighters they go in and meet like the, the the world champion and they get destroyed, then the two things can happen: either they get destroyed as well, or they feel this next level and then they level up as well. So I think that's how I gained a lot by playing with Falafel, by playing with Sander, just seeing how crazy good they play, you know, and then realizing, oh, there are extra levels I can unlock here. What are they doing that I need to learn? Uh, if you're just sitting in your own bubble, playing with XG all the time, you're never going to make it, you know, get yourself out there and compete. That would be my biggest advice. Well, very good. Thank you very much, both. I know you're both very busy with a lot of things to do. So I really appreciate your time. In the interest of time, we'll go ahead and conclude this video. Both of you are always welcome to come back at any time for another video. Thank you again to my good friend Simon Barguet from the UK and Mark Olson from Denmark and now Portugal. Uh, thank you to the viewers for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. I appreciate your super thanks. These small donations help me continue to create the high quality content that you enjoy. And now with our new membership feature, you get exclusive access to the most popular videos. Again, my book, Backgammon, Backgame um, Strategies is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested uh, in Mark's books, I'll put links there. If you're interested in lessons from me, Simon or Mark, I'll put links in the description to where you can contact us. I look forward to seeing everyone in future videos. And until then, keep rolling your dice.